Hi, I'm Murray and welcome to this video which is all about kitchen equipment. It's an absolute monster of a topic uh, and that's because the kitchen equipment industry is absolutely huge. The list of gimmicky kitchen tools is a little bit ridiculous actually, so it's really important to consider what you actually need carefully. In my kitchen, I like to avoid too many sort of gadgets, you know. Uh, these are jobs, these are pieces of kit that serve one purpose, they clutter up the kitchen, they waste money, and more importantly, they create more washing up at the end of the day. Now that said, I'm gonna break this topic down into digestible chunks. Okay, and use this video to talk about everything that you'll need for a basic kitchen. A student flat or a small home kitchen, uh, you, we only really need to, um, enough kit to do simple home cooking. If you signed up to our entry level course, that uni course, um, then with the exception of a decent knife, this is everything that you'll need. I'm gonna talk about knives in a separate video, or purchasing knives in a separate video, and if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can follow the on-screen link to that clip here. And following on from this video, I'll cover the additional equipment that you need if you're interested in progressing your cooking a bit further. Or if you're planning to work as a private chef, or if you're, if you're undertaking our 10-day foundation course. And I'll leave the link to that video at the end of this one. So let's get into it. One of the advantages of learning to cook properly from scratch is that you actually don't need too many gimmicks. Um, so everything I've got laid out here is probably the maximum you, you're going to need in it in a basic kitchen, actually even less than, than what I've got here. First and foremost, stock yourself up with uh, con consumables, okay, to keep your kitchen clean and, and hygienic. So I'm talking about cling film, uh, tin foil, aluminium foil, kitchen spray and a good supply of cloths um, and tea towels, uh, dry tea towels, washing up liquid, sort of scouring pads and, and wire wool, uh, bin liners, an oven cloth for handling for handling hot trays and, and things like that. You'll also need the crockery for the for the amount of people that you're you're serving. And then you need some storage. Now, when it comes to storage, I'm really fussy about plastic tubs. Okay, I want them all to be modular, all the same sort of size or shape, and never round because round tubs, although it's tempting to keep the mascarpone pot or or whatever, they don't. They're not very efficient when it comes to stacking them in, in the fridge and, and things like that. So they sort of waste space. So I buy these containers, uh, these containers here from Amazon or, or local wholesaler. They cost a fraction of what it costs to buy the Tupperware brands and the Rubbermaid brands and the, the stuff that you find in the kitchen shop. And they, and they stack really well in the fridge or in the freezer. Okay, so ideally you want some around the 500 mil mark like this, some slightly um, bigger ones, the two liter ones, which which are like this, and, and I, I have quite a few of these four liter ones as well. Then I can decant um, open packets of dry goods and, and things like that, or well, they're great for the freezer. The next is a small equipment, and utensils, like, utensils like a box grater, okay, for grating and zesting, or a microplane, um, either or. This isn't really essential if you've got one of these. You want a sieve, or ideally a couple of sieves, right? Metal ones tend to be stronger, so, so they're a good idea. Um, pair of tongs. Now, I like the, the cheap, simple metal ones like this. They're much easier to work with than the trendy, uh, chunky rubber ones, the non-stick ones. As long as you're very careful when they go anywhere near your your good pans. Okay. I want a, a one ladle. It's probably enough. You won't use it a lot, but it's, they do come in handy. So, slotted spoons. Uh, normal, normal sort of bigger spoons, serving spoons. Um, and a little lifter thing like this. I, I like these plastic ones from Ikea, they're, they're pretty pretty useful. Um, a peeler, these are my choice. Okay, they cost about a euro each, and the, the little metal ones, they have a great blade, they, they stay sharp for ages, and they're cheap, and they they um, are very, very easy to use, okay. Rubber spatulas, again, this is where I do spend a little bit of money, okay, because I, I can use them in the frying pan. Uh, I want them to be high heat, that's the really, really the important thing. A cheap one will just end up melting as soon as you as soon as you put it into a hot pan. Okay, so that I say a lot of money, is it probably ten or ten or twelve euros instead of instead of two. Okay, so that's quite important. I've got a rolling pin and I've got a pastry brush. Okay, if you're gonna be making pastry or, or that sort of thing, then it can be quite useful. This contraption is a potato riser, right? It's not essential by any means, but it, 
it'll save you a ton of time when it comes to mashing, making mashed potatoes, okay? The other option is to painstakingly put it through a sieve like this, okay? So for me, it's just basically a press with holes in it. You put the spud in and press it like that. You can find one for 10 or 15 euros and, and you'll be pleased that you've got one. Now you're going to need a couple of chopping boards, okay? Ideally plastic so you can keep them hygienic. Now in a commercial kitchen, you'd have a set of six different colored boards, okay? Like these for keeping, for keeping everything separate. Green is for fruit, red is for raw meat, dairy on the white, raw fish on the blue, veg on the brown and, and uh, cooked meat on the yellow. Okay, so, but as long as you're careful at home and, and you keep everything sanitized nicely um, and take care between uses to, to clean them down with, with soap, and sanitize them, then then I think it's a little bit excessive to have a, a kit like this in just in a, home, a simple home kitchen. Okay, what is a good idea is to is to try and keep um, things like raw meat on on one, and other things on a on a separate one. It's a good idea to keep one separate for things that you don't want a taste of garlic and onions, which which tend to get into everything. Okay, so so just think about think about that. Two or three at home should should be enough. Now, um, depending on your kitchen, heat mats, these little cork mats, they don't cost much, or, but it depends on your kitchen. If your kitchen doesn't have heat tolerant surfaces, then, then you might want to think about these. I, a lot of my surfaces are wooden, so, so we use quite a few of these. Now for the actual cooking, you'll need a, a set of saucepans, okay? They don't have to be fancy, they're too expensive. They should have a really heavy base, okay, like this. Um, and all that does is it, it means that they heat evenly and that prevents the food from burning, okay? Personally, I like stainless steel because with some wire wool, you know, a ball of wire wool, they scrub up really easily. They last for ages. And the same thing with wire wool goes for roasting pans, okay? You need to have a few different types of, of roasting pans. The shallower one like this that, that probably came with the oven and, and a couple of, of deeper ones, okay, like this. This can kind of double as a, as a cake tin um, and slow cooking meat and, and, and all of these kind of things. A loaf tin is quite useful, okay, great for simple cakes and things like that. Ideally non-stick, but um, a lot of mine aren't, but it's not essential. I usually line mine with baking paper anyway, so having it non-stick isn't really, really vital. Now, you need, you need at least one good non-stick pan, okay, these are in pretty reasonable condition. And that's really important. It needs to have a heavy base. When you pick it up, it's, it feels quite heavy and a good non-stick coating. Now, to just talk about these pans for a minute, these pans don't last forever, okay? The coating will be destroyed at some point, depending on how you, how you treat it, okay? So it's quite important to, to look after them and be quite particular about your, your good pan, okay? Now, I like to keep my good pan for certain jobs like frying fish, scrambled eggs, uh, crepes and frying gnocchi and, and basically anything that really requires the pan to be in, in pristine condition. And then I keep my older pan for jobs like sealing off meat where the, the pan needs to be really, really hot. And this is one of the quickest ways to destroy the new non-stick coating. And at the point when I need to replace my good pan, it just sort of shuffles down the pecking order onto the, onto the jobs that don't require a spotless non-stick surface, okay? And usually by the time I'm replacing, replacing that one, it's shuffled down the list, the one that's, the one that's in the middle is, is probably ready for the bin. So to give you an idea of how long one of these pans can last, I spend around 20 euros each on two non-stick pans at the start of every winter. And they are reserved for cooking eggs, for breakfast, and that's all, nothing else. And they last me for five months of the winter, cooking around 60 eggs each morning for the, for the guests. And they're usually giving up in the sort of last couple of weeks. They usually hobble their way through till the, till the end of the winter. But I think that that's pretty, pretty good going, okay? If we use these pans for everything that we cook in the kitchen, they'd be destroyed in a matter of a couple of weeks. And then I'd come upstairs on week three to cook my scrambled egg in the morning. They'd stick and, and it'd, be, it'd be a nightmare, okay? So <clears throat> it's really a good, a good point to take on. Need a few bowls. You know, stainless bowls. Stainless are quite good. You can use glass if you've got, if this, if you've got glass. There's nothing wrong with that, or plastic. The one thing that um, that with glass bowls is they can chip, and you, you have to be a bit careful about not getting chips of glass in your in your food. 
Um, and plastic bowls can sometimes take on some smell. Right? The ideal is, is stainless, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, and if you've noticed, this one has a really round base like this, which makes it ideal for, um, for whisking, okay, for getting a whisk in. It's quite hard to whisk something in a, in a bowl that's got a very flat base. Now, when it comes to electrical equipment, there's kind of two pieces of equipment that I, I really recommend for a basic kitchen. And one is a, a handheld stick blender, okay, for pureeing soups and, and things like that. And the other one is an electric hand whisk. You don't need to spend a lot of money on these, especially the whisk, okay? The expensive branded whisks are often no better than, than these, these cheap ones. I always buy the supermarket branded one for about 10 to 15 euros. And I ideally keep an eye out for one that's got big, big beaters with it. Okay, that's um, that's that's probably the only thing I I think about. Maybe I'll get the biggest one, um, the biggest uh, power rating I can find on it. This one is a, a Tesco's mixer, and it's 250, 250 watts. Lovely big, big beaters on it. So that that will be my my favourite. Um, when it comes to these blenders, the Braun ones and the Kenwood ones, you can get them for 15 or 20 euros. They're quite cheap um, and, and they, they're really good quality. This is something where the, the cheap ones, the sort of 9, 10, 11 euro ones from the supermarket, the blade's never really as good, the shape and the design's never as good, and the, um, they're always a bit gutless and they, they always sort of blow up too easily. Okay, so Braun or Kenwood or, or one of these more known brands is, is the way forward. Now one other thing that I, I think is great to have in a kitchen is a set of digital weighing scales, okay? Um, and this isn't just a, a, a light convenience, that it's really quite an important thing that I use a lot um, in the kitchen. You can pick up a cheap set for around, for around a tenner um, and they make everything easier, okay? This one measures down to the, to the gram, five, five kilos right down to one gram and that's, that's really useful. All of our recipes are converted into weight and volume. There's no cups or tablespoons or, or any of that rubbish and the main reason for that is it's very rare that you actually follow a recipe that's designed for the number of people that you're cooking for. You're always scaling it up, up or down, okay? And it's much easier if it's in grams and if everything is in grams and, and milliliters, except obviously for things like eggs, which, which are each. American recipes, for example, often call for one cup, two tablespoons, and a, and a teaspoon of flour instead of 145 grams of flour. So if you have to halve that or double it or even triple it for the recipe, it's just a bloody nightmare. It also makes it easier to weigh things up as you're trying everything up for cooking and it makes it much easier to write a shopping list. So that's kind of our method and I really recommend it. It might take a while to get used to, but it's, it's definitely worth making the effort early on. Now when it comes to places to shop for equipment, um, I find that big supermarkets or, or Amazon are, are great for equipment. There's, there's so much variety these days and, and cooking shops on the high street tend to have a, a huge range of, of things. A lot of things that you don't tend to need and, and usually a huge markup. So for me, generally, online is, is the best place to buy things. And if you're in Europe, there's a company called Nisbets. Uh, they're a catering supplier to the, to the industry. They've got a huge website, huge warehouses. They've got their own brands like Buffalo and Vogue, which generally are modeled on the, on the more expensive commercial kit, but down at a price that you can afford to pay. So check them out as well. So that's about all you need for a basic kitchen. Remember, you do also need at least one good knife, okay, one, one cook's knife and something to sharpen it with. But we'll have a look at uh, knives in more detail uh, in a separate clip. Next up, I'm gonna look at the kit that you'll need. If you're starting to think about progressing your cooking a little bit uh, and, and you need a, a little bit more technical gear. Now, don't forget you can see the full list of our recommended equipment in uh, the description below or, or on our website by following the link in the description. Thanks for watching, see you soon.